um, recently we had the lovely Lorna Reeves who joined us for a catch up after three years of uh, since the last episode. Um, and today we have another co op one member, the lovely Katie Saywell. A uh, bit of a reminder of Katie for those who don't know her story. She was a police officer for around 10 years. Is that right, Katie? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and due to wanting a better life, due to, you know, wanting to fulfill her potential, uh, she knew she knew she wanted to build a business. And she joined Shift Success back in 2018 with no business idea or business experience. And in a nutshell, she grabbed life by the balls. She built her business, The Dog's Code, which is a dog trick, well, a dash down specific training company. Um, and she became financially independent. She left the job, I think it was about 24 months, or 18 months after the business. Oh, uh, yeah, I want to say about 18 months. Yeah, about 18 months. So you left the job after 18 months of from scratch of building that business. Um, and now, you know, you're working with Dash Down owners all over the world. Um, you've changed your life in an amazing way. You're building a new business, which we're going to talk about soon. Um, and also you've relocated next to the sea. But before we get into that, Katie, welcome to the show again. How was the... Uh, how has the last three years been for you since we last spoke on the uh, the podcast? Crazy, crazy. It's been a while. It's been a while. So thanks for having me to start with. Um, no yeah, no, things have changed. Things have changed massively. So how would you summarize? How would you summarize in three in three words? What would you what do you use to summarize the last three years? Oh, it's going to be a journey, definitely. Yeah. Um, hard work, and I'm going to go freedom. Oh, okay. Let's go down those words. So, so, so why those words specifically? Talk to me about what's going on in the last three years for you to say those words. So, um, I left, obviously I left the job three years ago. Um, I left in the February, in the March we hit COVID. So we hit the pandemic. Yep. Um, so that was literally a, oh shit, what have I done? Um, <laughs> oh, I, I think I actually remember being on the phone to you going, I don't know what to do. I'm not sure. <laughs> Ah, what yeah. I do? Um, so that was a massive it was a massive curveball so that was kind of the start of the journey mm-hmm. um obviously I was fine oh you know I'm still here I didn't implode or anything it, you know picked up the phone carried on making calls yes they were a bit more difficult but managed to get through it took everything from face to face um everything from kind of all the business that I'd built up around a specific venue that I was using um, and going around to people's houses, obviously there was a stop put on that. So I couldn't use any of that. I couldn't carry on doing that. So I had to take everybody online and people were reluctant. People are still reluctant three years on to go online because they don't see the benefits of it. But hey, ho, mm-hmm. it's not for everyone. Um, so that was kind of the biggest one um, in the start of the journey. And I kind of, yeah, just had I had a choice, really, I either make it work or I go and get a job. Um, and I did toy with the idea of, of packing it all in and, and getting a job and going, oh, it will be much easier to be somebody else on someone else's payroll. And I thought, no, I've worked this, I've worked this pretty hard to get to this point. And actually, I can do this. Worst, worst case scenario, what's the worst that's going to happen? It doesn't work. And then I go somewhere else. So I put everything into it um, in terms of my time um, and my effort. Um, and, and yeah, it, it went in the right direction. Um, so that was the, the part of the, the journey part. Yeah. Um, then what else happened? So relationship broke down that I was in. Um, so I was like, right, okay, what am we going to do now? Um, and I, yeah, you'd kind of just get to that point where you just go, I need to do something. And actually looking back over my, um, what was it? A vision board that I'd done in 20, 2018, something mm-hmm. like that. I think, I think I joined Shift Success 2018, wasn't it? That was um, right, yeah, April 2018. So I would have done the vision board in mm-hmm. 2018. And on there, I'd, I'd said in there, you know, I wanted to live by the sea. It was something that I'd always wanted to do. And I thought, you know what, just take this opportunity. Just fuck it and do it. Because you know what I've, I've realised is that life is too short. And actually, I could get taken out by a bus tomorrow. So what? why am I, why am I thinking for other people rather than just myself? Like... Mm-hmm. And it's, I don't think it's about being selfish. I think it's about saying, actually, I want to better myself. I want to better my life. So just sod it. Just go and do it. So mm. that's what I did. Um, so I up sticks from everything that I've ever known, um, up sticks from, from Nottingham, and said, Statty bye, and moved four and a half hours away. To where? 
down to the south coast. So I'm in the southwest. So I'm in uh, Cornwall now. Uh, moved down to Devon initially. Um, was there in a uh, and in retirement, little retirement village, and it was absolutely fantastic. It was exactly what I needed. I'd got time to kind of get myself back together. Obviously, I'm still running the business. I haven't stopped running the business. It's carried on throughout kind of all this sort of turmoil. Um, and then, yeah, and, and then I'm now at where I am now. So, yeah, I absolutely love it. Really right near the beach, taking up surfing. So go out surfing as well as and when I can. Um, outdoor sports. I've met loads of people down here. There's, I've got like a little, little group of friends, um, strangely, some of which are ex-cops um retired cops um but I think we kind of had that stuff in general you have that kind of common ground that if you're an ex-cop you kind of know what cops are like um but yeah so I'm like at the gym and we have got just got like a nice little nice little pocket of friends um in different areas I've got like I'm my surf surf buddies uh and then the the uh the ex-cops as well so it's quite nice so, so it's fair to say your quality of life compared to being in the police is, is very different Oh my God. Yeah. Like literally like turn it on its head, spin it all the way around. And that's probably not even close to where I am. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And look, you've earned it. You've, you've earned that. So uh, yeah, well done you. I want to go to take it back. So like when, when COVID hit for you, cause I remember having the conversation, you were thinking about leaving the job, the business is going in the right direction. And you're like, Alex, I'm thinking about resigning. Do I do it? And then COVID during this time was there. You said that the thought process for you was, do I get another job because this has happened or do I figure this stuff out and actually grow my business despite COVID? Mm-hmm. Why Katie, did you cheat choose the path of uh, mm-hmm. most resistance? Most people would go down the route of this is the easier option. I'm going to get a job because this is all happening. Why didn't you choose that option? And what was kind of, your reasonings for that it's really difficult I feel like I'd put so much into put so much into the point where I'd got to so I'd got to that point where I'd left and it was almost the I wanted to stick two fingers up and say I can do this Mm. I've got this far what else can life throw at me what else can it possibly do to not make me continue on this um yeah it would have been the easy option but the easy option I'd already kind of been in the payroll world for a long time I've been in the employee employee world for a long time and where does that where does that attitude come from because that's not what you're saying that isn't normal it might be normal to you it might be normal to me but you know we both know the mindset that a lot of police officers can have and in fact not even just police officers a lot of people out there in the general public where does that attitude come from of no I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to make it that's a really tricky one Alex you know I don't know I don't know I don't know where that comes from I'm assuming just over the years that's kind of what I've used as a maybe a protection mode I don't know I really don't know I don't have a I don't have a kind of a, a kind of a, a thing to be able to say you know this is why that happened I've got a kind of a like intrinsically that's kind of what I do mm-hmm. like if if I want to do something then I just go and do it like if it's yeah if it's tricky and difficult to get there and I suppose it depends on that outcome, that desire to actually do it. Do I really want to be successful in what I'm doing or am I just going to go, right, okay, yeah, COVID's hit and I'm going to cry about it for five minutes and then I'm going to go and get a job or I'm going to cry about it for five minutes and go, right, okay, let's let's actually prove that this is going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Mindset is obviously the, the obvious go-to there. Yeah. Maybe over the years I've developed that. Well, I know I have developed that. Um, mm-hmm. But I think I've always had that kind of, if someone says I can't do something, mm. then I'll, I'll make sure that I do it. I love that. It's, it's funny because, you know, there's, there's a quote out there. If you choose what is easy, if you choose what is easy, your life will be hard. If you choose what is hard, your life will be easy. Now, in that decision, yeah. you chose the hardest thing possible was actually I'm going to stick with my business. I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to make it through. Uh, and, and, you know, you're not the only one. There's other people who've done that. And 
they're reaping the rewards that, you know, you're living by the sea, you've got this amazing life now and you're living life on your terms, starting new businesses and stuff because you chose what was hard at that current time. You didn't bottle it and go for the easy option, which most people would, 90% of people would go for that option, KT. Now, obviously that extra, you know, 10% didn't and they're now reaping the rewards. Mm -hmm. And probably a lesson I want to share with everyone like who's listening to this is, you know, when you're faced with that decision of, is this going to hurt me short term? Or is this going to hurt hurt me long term? I would probably go with the long term thinking, which obviously you have. Um, you mentioned mindset there, which I agree with. Your attitude is, is is a synergy with your mindset. For you being in the police for that that amount of time, dealing with the negativity, you know, we all know what the environment's like in the job. How did you develop your mindset? Because you know, I see so much potential in police officers who want to change their lives who say something on the surface but the the only thing that stops them it's not money it's not time it's not anything else is really their mindset for you how did you develop that and what kind of advice would you give to the listeners to get into the state of mind that you've developed okay so um I'm sure you can remember going back so I was kind of one of the one of the cynical ones one of the oh, I don't know Alex I'm not sure if I should be signing up I don't know I don't know oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and, and then what I would say is like just be specific like you have got the the opportunity to develop your mindset even if you're doing nothing else with it so even if you're not going into business or you know you're not looking to come out of the job or you you know you're quite happy where you are developing your mindset is it's really powerful because it it almost allows you a bit of freedom it allows you to step back and look at a situation and go hmm okay well do I want to do that and get the same result or do I want to do that and get a different result or do I want to change what I'm doing and get a different result rather um how did I change my mindset so I'd say mine pretty much was I had my eyes opened so by the mentors um I remember listening to the mentors and thinking wow these are these guys are normal people how have they got how have they got to this, this, you know, this level? This is like crazy. I want a bit of that. Like how, how have they done that? And and like, like, because I didn't have anyone in business, really. Mm. No mm. one to talk to, no one to kind of pick their brain or anything. So that was kind of the first part. Um, my, my eyes were opened up to the possibilities of things that could happen. Mm-hmm. And then reading. So reading was a is was and is a massive one still. Um and visualization Mm -hmm. but also kind of like healthy body healthy mind so keeping yourself fit and healthy and in turn keeping your mind fit and healthy as well Mm. so by doing that reading by in taking in all of that Mm. information that you you're learning actually do something with it so like it's okay reading a book but if you're not then going to take action on it Mm. then what's the point in reading it yeah i know completely agree so actually the the small things and i think um i want to say it's the slight edge with uh, jeff olson yeah with um where you can take the same steps mm-hmm. in doing something unhealthy or bad for you mm-hmm. so to not change something it's probably going to take you more steps than it is if you want to just change it and take the steps anyway yeah yeah lorna mentioned that on the podcast and it, obviously it's my favorite book everyone knows that is it's one of those things that, you know, I show my coaster the other day, I'll show it again, but got them around around my house as a constant reminder that every decision you make matters. You're either succeeding or failing, there's no in between. And that decision, which you made at the time of, do I get a job, COVID's happened, or do I actually work and figure this out? Mm-hmm. Obviously gone towards the 5% of success it says on here. So um, I think mindset's important. And you also mentioned, you know, visualize, visualization. Um, mm-hmm. And now I'm not woo woo, and I know you're not woo woo either. But I think it's very important. I think it's. It, I, I believe in it wholeheartedly. I can remember driving to custody once when I was a DO. I was a part of a property program at the time, and getting really like kind of pumped up or borderline emotional. My eyes are watering, thinking what it would be like to resign with you know a property business and that kind of feeling of being awarded a top performer mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I was so immersed in that visualization. Now that happened for me, it actually came true. But for you, how do you visualize it? And what do you visualize about? Or, or what did you visualize at the time? So at the time, so I 
So when I was building the business, I'm going to go back to the vision board because that's kind of, for me, that was quite a, well, it's a vision, visualization, similar kind yeah, of yeah. kind of thing that you're doing there, isn't it? You're kind of plucking out what yeah. you do want to be. So I've got things on there like, wanted to be an industry leader, mm -hmm. uh, wanted to be known as the go-to person, wanted a YouTube channel, wanted um, um, a book. <laughs> we'll yeah. put some mark over that one for the time being. Yeah. Um, what else did I have on there? Healthy body, healthy mind. I wanted to teach others coming along the path. Yeah. Or journey, whichever. Um, Seaside, I think. Yeah, I'd got, I wanted to live by the sea. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then you look back and you go, wow, that's scary. That's scary that the things that I said, and it goes back to that, I don't know who it is that says it, but it's about the five years. So you, mm -hmm. you're one of what you'll become, in, like what happens now is the product of five years or whatever. Yeah, whatever. The, the decisions you make now are a reflection of the five years, yeah. Yeah, um, and when you look back, 2018 was five years ago. It's spooky, isn't it? That's well scary to think yeah. that, Um but yeah. you know, I have got like things that have happened. Yeah. I'm a trustee for the charity that I work with. Um, people do know me, people tag me in social media. Um, I've got a YouTube channel. I've written a couple of PDF books, not physical books yet. Um yeah. still in the making. Um, what else? Oh, I live by the sea, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Well, 20 minutes away. It's not yeah. quite so for you, but <laughs> you know, close. 20 minutes is close enough. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah. And yeah. That, that kind of thing, like like the visualization and the, the gratitude as well. So, you know, that, the things like and it sounds really crazy, and I know it sounds crazy, but I, I kind of get it that I'm talking to you, so it's a little bit more of a, a safe space where you're not going to think, geez, who's this that I'm trying to? Um, so um, things like just talking to yourself in a really positive way, mm. seeing yourself for who you are, um, and being grateful. So grateful to be who I am, grateful to live where I do, grateful to... Um, earn uh, the money that I do grateful to have the clients that I have um, and like willing myself to be successful um, and that kind of stuff and I love that so so one of the one of the things that I'm self-aware of is that I need to practice gratitude a lot more it is very hard to be sad or angry or miserable when you're grateful as well at the same time um, how do you practice gratitude is it something that you know because because i speak to myself too it's completely fine and you know unless you're in the car and someone looks over and think you're absolutely losing your mind um but for you know for you how, how do you practice gratitude do you write it down um i know you know my sophie the fiance she'll say you know in bed um you know what's one thing you're grateful for today like she, she'll spur it on for me but for, and that's how we do it but i'm wondering if there's a better way and maybe i should probably do it more what do you do um, so a bit of a combination really so I mean I, I kind of just like write stuff down um, so I have like written stuff down um, and sometimes I'll just be sitting and I'll think oh my day's not quite going as I planned today mm -hmm. but actually what am I grateful for so then I'll tell myself something so that might be something that as I'm writing I might write it down or it may just be a kind of a thought that's there or sometimes I'll just like, take five minutes and just have a little think about life and about what's happened within that that day or within that week. Um, to say actually, yeah, this was this wasn't quite so good. This wasn't quite so good. This was really good. This was really good. But actually, I'm really grateful that I had that experience that wasn't so good because then that brought out that. What emotions do you feel when when you're grateful? Like when you're really writing these things down of what you've achieved or, or in fact, the life you live in, yeah. what what emotion comes to mind straight away for you? Oh, what emotion? Uh, okay, so probably probably just like happy, like fulfilled. It's mm. a kind of a, I'm going to say it's not an overwhelming feeling, but it's a, you, you've done it. You've got there. You've done it. That kind of like, achievement even you, you've got to that that point where they you know nobody can take that away from you because that's your thing yeah yeah I love that I think sometimes as well like many people get carried away they'll look at 17 year olds or 
whoever like becoming millionaires overnight and and they, some, sometimes people get that toxic comparison and i think you know practicing gratitude is, is really important to put things in perspective of all the things that you've achieved and i see it with our own members right i i've seen and you know you're a you're a phenomenal coach for us now you're an accountability coach a very highly valued coach for shift success and we see it when we have our 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 discussions about our members we see those people sometimes where you know they've achieve X, Y, Z, but because they're so focused on getting the goal and, and the drive to get in the six figure business or the financial independence, they don't appreciate what they've built in the meantime. They, they forget about what all they've done, like call the business idea, build a group, build followers, generate leads, you know, make a few sales. They'll forget about that because they're so obsessed with getting that. And that can be very toxic in itself. And I think it's very important and it's something, you know, we might add in the future, actually, you know, what you're actually grateful for. Um, because if you don't enjoy that journey, you know, it, you, you're going to be, it's going to be a painful journey, right? Rather than uh, an enjoyable one. Yeah. And, and I think like on that note, like just sharing stuff as well. So having, like it may seem very small and um, insignificant to somebody else, but it's not their journey, it's yours. Mm. Like it doesn't it doesn't matter how small and insignificant to somebody else it, it might be it's mm. it's about you and it's about how it makes you feel personally yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah very very true um so the docs code this is your amazing business that you founded uh with the help of shift success back in 2018 um i know some discussions we had around business ideas what to do what to do you have the lovely chip which is your gorgeous little dash hound <laughs> Um, how's that been going? Crazy, crazy. So like over the last three years, um, yeah, it's gone pretty crazy. So obviously COVID hit, everything went online, um, and it's carried on building. So it's built from, in effect, thin air, it built from an idea. Um, it built from actually not having an idea to start with into an idea. It developed into an idea, should we say, yeah. um, Thanks to your guys' help um, and the rest of the, the co-op members as well at the time. Um, and it's built. It's gone from strength to strength. So we now have um, clients globally. We have... What, what countries? I mean, I, I always see when I go on holiday and I see a dash hound on holiday, I'm like, oh, my God, I lose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, there's another one here. <laughs> um, so um, I've got currently uh, New York. Wow. Um, so she's probably the furthest away um we've recently had some australian inquiries which is pretty cool awesome um and then it depends whether you count them or not but island yep so and then everybody else is kind of in in yeah. in, in, in the uk but not nobody's local to me which yeah. i always find which is even better really because it just shows that kind of um reach that we have um so yeah the so on a one day a week, I do rescue work. So I work for a national charity. Um, I'm also a trustee of that same charity as well. Mm -hmm. So I help them help them with the dogs that they're rehoming. Um, and I work with the dogs that have been rehomed to kind of get them up to a level where the owners are then happy with them. Mm. Um, what else? Yeah, it's really just gone from strength to strength. We built a membership program. So that was probably the biggest turning point for me. Um, having the membership program going from kind of face-to-face uh, -face and in the venue to going online but working in a group setting so I still do one-to-ones online but I focus more around the membership well what, what was the benefits for for you and the business in 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 the membership model um so benefits for for me for the business um it frees up loads of my time mm -hmm. Because I've got one, one or two set set times and dates that people join me. Mm -hmm. um, I can be a bit more flexible in terms of one to ones and actually helping people as well. So if there are people on the membership program that are struggling, I can give them one to one time, and I've got the time to do that. So I can focus on them rather than running around like a headless chicken mm -hmm. and having one to ones scattered all over the place. That I don't really have time to focus on that person. Mm -hmm. It, it allows that time to do that. So it allows it to be a very personal service at the same time as it being yeah. group and memberships. 
Yeah, I love that. I love that. I remember um, we had a few um, people who was inquiring about shift, joining shift success dog trainers who are ex-police or, or serving police. And um, one particular person came to us who um, was clearly like, I'm not going to join shift success um, for whatever reason. And they explained in that situation that uh, they had unfortunately folded their business after COVID and gone back into the job. Mm -hmm. And what you've done is transition to online. Mm -hmm. You've created a membership model that benefits not only the customer, but mm -hmm. also benefits you in giving back your time, mm -hmm. but also from a higher business model point of view, you've created scalability. Yeah. This is so important for people to realize, I think, especially hearing Katie's story in this space and also dog trainers out there mm. is that you don't know what you don't know and blind spots can cost you a fortune. Now for you, you knew what you knew because you're investing in yourself and now you're living life on your terms and doing amazingly well. But for those out there, I'm not talking about joining shift success. You join some other business training program or whatever. I'm not talking about shift success precisely. What I'm trying to say is that you need to educate yourself on knowing what to do and how to do it Otherwise, you won't ride the wave of opportunity when it arises. Now, for us, Katie, my business went online, fully online. Part of it was already, but we went online fully. And a lot of our other members did. Like Lorna talked uh, last week, or was it earlier this week, that about uh, her events got shut down and she transitioned online. And again, she's riding that wave. She, you know, she's smashing it just like you. Um, so I just want to kind of pick that up because a lot of people are like, oh, it's doom and gloom. You know, they can't do anything here. And it is that mindset again that's come into play with those people who win and lose. Um, and I just find it fascinating that people just decide to, you know, put their head in the sand and, and not find a way. Um, and it's amazing that you've created a membership website that now is scalable and working with people in New York, which is phenomenal. What's kind of been the hardest challenge for you with the dog scope? Over the last three years, you know, we've talked about you scale, uh, sorry, starting the business where you was, but over the last three years, what, what's kind of some of the challenges that you faced, would you say? Um, whether that's from a customer perspective, a nightmare customer, or, you know, scaling or something going wrong, what kind of comes to mind for you? I'd probably say when, so when um, the pandemic kind of, we, we kind of came out of a lockdown and things like that. So um, for me, loads of people were getting puppies um, at that point, and loads of people were um, signing up for puppy school. And we still have puppy school; we still run puppy school, but we don't put as much effort into it now mm -hmm. because what we realise is that, that, like, people still don't really want to come online to teach their puppies because they have this whole mindset thing um, of they don't need to come to an online when they can go and do it face to face, which is very it's mm -hmm. a very traditional way of thinking. So that was probably my biggest. And probably is still the biggest. Um, I don't want to say failure. It's not failure. Um, it's just more of a. It's a learning curve. Yeah. So, the clients that have dropped off there, mm. and it's how to get them back, or mm. actually, is there a space? Do they need to come back? Mm. Now, for me, I think it is a question of both. I think some people do need to come back. Yep. As in, as in, some people do need to enroll on that type of thing, but for other people, they don't need to. So it's okay that we're not push, pushing, pushing, and pushing that because we still do get clients on there, but just not at the scale as the other membership. Got you. Got you. Makes sense. Um, and we've got kind of more security around the the longer. Well, it's, it's an initial six month program. Mm -hmm. um, we we kind of get the the higher clientele in there mm -hmm. but that was kind of the I, hope, I don't know if I've explained that right or not but um but in essence it was almost drumming down on puppy school because yep. it was and it was recognizing that that was not it that wasn't actually still something that was so relevant and so pertinent to people yeah because now they were able to go and have a bit more choice about where they went yeah Absolutely sense. And, you know, in business, this is a lesson for everyone as well. It's like when you create multiple products, which you have, we have as well, you, you focus on the one that is a the most popular, it's going to be the most revenue builder. Um, and you can create other products around it that are just natural follow on products or lead in products. 
And what it sounds to me is that you focus on one product, which was grown nicely, and the other ones are not so much focused around there, but they're there just in case, you know, people do want to purchase them. Like investing to success for us, it's like, it's there in case you want it, right? So completely get it. Um, you, I want to touch on something, because this is, again, um, something that resonates with me and my and my kind of background so um you mentioned relationships mm -hmm. and um you you broke down with your partner your ex-partner now um now i had the same i had the same situation um i think it was maybe i don't know if it was the same time or not about two and a half years ago maybe th no sorry close to three and a half years ago now close to four and i want to hear your thoughts on this because for me it was like uh i'm growing and I'm changing as a person. I'm consuming more books and I want this and I want to achieve this, um, which doesn't make the other person bad. And, you know, I still speak to my partner, uh, sorry, ex-partner, because we've got joint custody of the dogs now. Um, she's amazing, but we just had different values and different goals. Um, and I find that a very common theme with people who do go into business and become entrepreneurs because it's a, it's a new kind of world for them. For you, kind of, did you experience that in, in any way, shape, or form um, with regards to you going into business compared to being in the job and your relationship? If that makes sense. Yeah, I think I think when you, when I look back, there's all of those elements are there. I think for me, um, we'd got together quite well. I say quite young. We were like 20, 24, 26 ish. Yeah. Um, and. Like not far off, like we've sort of been together for about 10 years. And I think from your, your sort of your mid-20s to your mid-30s, I think there's a big change that happens. And I think it's a lot of people have this kind of, it's not a midlife crisis at all. It's not, that's not what I'm suggesting. But <laughs> I think there's a change and there is a lot of growth that happens. Mm. And I think that that's kind of like prime time. So if you think about kind of the the like employment world, there that's kind of the when you're going to be scaling up in the businesses that you're working in. Or for me, it was actually I'm learning how to create our business to be able to get to that point. So I'd gone from this kind of like party animal to entrepreneur. Yeah. Look at it from that, you know, the yeah. extremes. So, yeah, it's no wonder really the relationship did fall. Did, yeah. did fall. But, you know, at the time it was sort of the worst thing in the world. But yeah. actually, it, when I look back, it really probably wasn't the worst thing that could have happened. Yeah. Yeah, no, I completely agree because obviously, you know, we meet you meet new people and yeah. you know, you you grow to new heights and stuff like that. I just find it a very common thing that you know, you know, I know the divorce rate's high in, in the police and other areas, but also I have noticed it when when people decide to go after something, if the support or the difference in values, the same values aren't there, things kind of yeah. change that person. Not in a horrible way, it's more of a I'm different now than I was. Yeah, and, and it's that it's that growing apart. And I think that yeah. that kind of growing apart and it's almost like having like you you're on that car journey, you're both in the car journey, one of you's going off at the exit and the other one's continuing. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. That kind of like that that split that part. Um, but also you just mentioned about support there, and actually I didn't yeah. really have the support there to yeah, to get me where not they didn't get me where I wanted to be. That sounds really selfish, yeah. but actually there was the support needed to be there that wasn't yeah there. yeah I, I, completely I needed resonate. a cheerleader but I didn't have a cheerleader that's yeah. in essence what it was completely resonate with that completely resonate with that and it's not so much that they don't want you to win it's like that's just not their values that that's not where they're at like with my partner she's she doesn't do my ex-partner sorry doesn't like not in the business world that's not her thing whatsoever yeah. we just had completely different alignment and values because I decided to change yeah. um and I think you know if you are in business it is nice having that support from up someone, that partner, because it, it is hard and you go through ups and downs, um, like with anything in life. But when you're trying to achieve something for the for the, for the betterment of you, it's really important. I think that you do have that cheerleader and you can do it and you will make it. It's, it's awesome because those, those people are going to see you behind closed doors that other people aren't. Right. And you do need that kind of, you know, hug now and then saying, yep, it's going to be all good. So yeah, sure. And and like when you're talking about support, you're not necessarily looking at relying on that other person. Yeah. But just like you say, just to have that moral. Just, yeah, just to have that kind of acknowledgement of of saying, you know, you you're doing all right here. You you'll be fine. Love that. Yeah, completely agree. Completely agree. So you've also launched a new business. 
And this is a common theme, guys. If you notice with some of the, the shows we've been having, when you know how to build a business the first time, you're not going to lose those skills, right? It's like once you've learned it, you know what to do, you know how to sell, you know how to market yourself, you know how to build an audience, create a product, you're not going to unlearn them. You're going to build again and again and again. So for my, you know, property business for me, then shift success, you know, vital life boost, lease success. Katie's now set, creating a second business. Lorna has created a second business. We've had people like Mark Phillip, who's on his second business, Mark Walsh. You'll learn the skills and you build upon them and grow and grow and grow. So for Katie, do you want to share what your next business is? Because uh, I think it's awesome. <laughs> so um, the next business, well, it's called Dinky Dog Deli. And if the name doesn't give it away, it's small, it's uh, small treats, small natural treats for small paws. So small dog treats um, delivered to your door. Um, it's like a chime. You could do that. Like a, a, I, know, a, I like it. I like it. I mean, like they, it, it was good. It was good. Like the branding and then they kind of playing around with the, the, um, the play on words was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's in essence, it's a e-commerce uh, business. Um, mm-hmm. Very, 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 very in its infancy. Um, yep. It's launched. We uh, we are a business. We have made sales. So that's, that's cool. Right. Um, but yeah, no, second time around um, feels much easier. Um, yep. And like you say, because you've kind of already got that skill to be able to build your business. So yeah, just go with it. But then you realize actually there are gaps as well. So you kind of go, oh, actually, well, I, don't, I don't remember doing that last time. But, yep. but the first time around, it was like pulling teeth. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine because like your confidence is there. That's what it is. Right? It's like first time I built my business, I was unconfident. I didn't know what I was doing right off the bat. But as I've built the first business, my confidence going to the second business is there because I almost kind of know what to expect. Um, but what you said there, which I think is quite interesting, and this is humility, which is important. You just never stop learning. Yeah. You've got to learn, right? You've got to constantly learn. I think that if you don't keep yeah. learning, you die, right? So yeah, and you, you kind of take your, what is it? You take your, your eye off the ball. Yeah. When you're not learning, you, you're taking your eye off the ball because you're focusing elsewhere. So what are you do with that time that you're not learning? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, so the new business is very, very new. Um, yeah. I can't even remember what date we launched, but it's like literally within the last two months. Awesome. So it's like a, a direct, direct D2C, direct consumer brand. So um, I'm assuming uh, you've got a website, which is Dinky. Yeah. Dog, dog, say it. Dinky Dog Deli. Dinky oh. Dog Deli. <laughs> uh, and obviously, you've got an audience of you know thousands across your social media. Yeah. Um, and I'm assuming it's like kind of a follow-on product for them. Is it small treats for dogs or? Yeah. So it's natural treats. So you know, there's loads and loads of different natural treats out there. Um, but I've found that when you try and buy the smaller treats, um, that the you can buy like you know you can buy like a, a leg of an animal this big <laughs> when your dog's jaws this big it's not really that handy yeah. uh, so that was kind of the, the the thought process behind the business um we did some market research with the current um owners that we've got so with the the kind of the thousands within the social media platforms yeah some, um social media uh, sorry research around you like the, the questions that we're looking at mm-hmm. um so they gave us some really pinpoint kind of things that they were looking for um and we're looking at like influencers using influencers to promote Mm -hmm. um and yeah just really just it's it's a bit of fun i I find this one not that i don't find the the dog's code fun to i I find it interesting i I really enjoy working with the people that i work with um dinky dog deli is just a little bit more fun it's almost like i've got my own little picking and packing yeah area going off um the plan is to have that outsourced when it gets to a, a big enough scale that it that it needs to be outsourced um but at the minute at the minute we're quite happy picking and packing and you know designing how how things look and yeah it's it's nice um but yeah so it's a yeah amazing so i'm assuming you're kind of using shopify you're going to use facebook ads eventually yeah. um and then obviously you know drive traffic to your website for purchase um and then picking and packing for the time being to keep yeah. profit margins high for sure. but, but then when you get, it gets crazy busy which i'm sure it will you are going to probably work with a 3pl company like a third party logistics company so it's already kind of in place so the um the company that i'm currently sourcing from 
yeah. also do um, like fulfillment. They also do <clears throat> that. They do kind of white label products, if you like, mm. and put them, you can put your whole line and your products through their yeah. um, fulfillment centers. Um, and it's not actually too bad in terms of profitability, the yeah. profitability. Even. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's where we are. So yeah, we've got the Shopify website um, and that's really easy. Like order comes in, you've got all the details there. You literally hit print, prints the labels off, prints the order off. And then I go put it in a box yeah. and put a label on it. Yeah. I, I, do, you, do you find like, cause we both work with people, right? So we've both got service-based businesses. We've also got product-based businesses. Like, do you find it more simple almost with the uh, the product based? Yeah, so <laughs> you're absolutely just cutting out like any any conversation with anyone because they're <laughs> yeah, almost buying on like autopilot, if you like. Yeah. Like right at the beginning, I remember that I always wanted like before I knew anything about business, I was so hell bent on I wanted a physical product. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can remember or not. I used to um, sell the light up dog collars. I did yeah, I remember um, you gave me one. Yeah. Um, so I, I wanted this kind of a tangible thing. And then obviously yeah. I went down the route of the service based, which I was like, yeah, this is great. Because what's that that's enabled me to do is like have all my time wise, those mm -hmm. so spending my time wisely, but it's then allowed me to create this business, which I can then use. And I just feel like it's I feel at the minute, and you're gonna hate me for saying this, but I feel like it's more of a hobby at the minute. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, look, an order's come in. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah. And I get a little bit excited about it because somebody that I don't really know has yeah. just placed an order. Yeah. So it means that stuff is working. I love that. Have you got the little uh, the, the Shopify app? So it goes cha-ching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the nicest <laughs> feeling, isn't it? Um, but yeah, so that's quite that's quite nice. And um, yeah, and I'm not doing this alone this time. So me and partner have kind of gone in together to to do this one. Um, which is nice. So, love so that. Yeah. I love that. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. So, um, over kind of one of the plans over the next kind of three years for you, like where are you going in terms of the dog's code? Are you scaling that? Are you going to be hiring soon? Kind of what's your thoughts around that? So, I currently have a couple of instructors that um, are sort of freelance for me. Mm -hmm. um, so that works because they've got their own businesses um, and they're they're happy doing what they're doing as well and they're happy delivering for me at the same time so I have got kind of a I probably call it more of a, a flexi team than a an actual yeah. team that we're all together all the time mm -hmm. um, and obviously in there we've got kind of VA and um, accountants mm -hmm. um, in terms of the dog's code it will continue uh, no doubt about that. It will continue, will continue to grow and it will continue to scale up. Um, there's so many dogs around. The pressure is now on because there's a few other Daxi trainers um, yeah. that, have, that have surfaced. Um, well, so, saw your success, right? I, I, you know, as a, <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but um, maybe they just thought they'd, they'd have a try. Um so I think it initially started off, it was me, then there was one other lady. And now there's like, there's like maybe 10, something like that. Wow. Um, but I kind of just think, you know, there's enough dogs to go around. Like, Let's touch on that. Because again, your attitude and your mindset is coming through like an absolute gem. So, so many people will get bottled of the thought of competition. They get wobbled by it. They're like, oh my God, no, there's competition out there. Oh, I, you know, they're, they're coming after my business or I can't do that because it's already doing it. You quite really, rightly said, which is your abundance mindset coming through. Um, there's enough result. Yeah, for sure. Talk to me through that. What, what's, what, why do you think that? Because I think the same. So there's a, I think when, I don't know what it was, um, 2000 and, oh. I'm not even going to bother with the date. Yeah. So Small Business Sunday. So Theo Profitas, the award. Um, yeah. So that was that was just before COVID. So I'd got that award just before COVID. Um, and I went to a presentation and he said something like, at the time there was 285,000 dog trainers in the UK. And that was 2018, 2019. I think it was 2019. Um, might be a little bit later. Um, 
And I remember thinking, 285,000 dog trainers, and I've just won an award. Okay. Yeah. So why am I different? What makes me different? What makes mm. me any different to any of the other people that have that have kind of gone for this award? Mm-hmm. And and they, obviously I'm in the dog training world, so there's a lot of dog trainers that I know that really wanted the award that I'd got. I remember thinking, what is it? What is so different about my business? And it's mm-hmm. the niche. It's the niche of the business. It's having that niche area and saying, right, this is who I am. This is where I'm going to stand up and stand out. And yeah, you, you're going to take that and own that space, but also being good at what you're doing. Um, not just taking it and going, I'm just a mediocre. I'm not yeah. not knowing who I am as well. So actually realizing that you can offer people that value, you can offer people change as long as they're willing to change. Um, but that kind of the difference of is that it's that niche and having that that niche area so dogs are still being born every single day dogs still need trainers every single day so there's plenty there's plenty of dogs there's like billions of dogs in the uk alone let alone having the reach that the dogs code has so actually, yeah, if you want to, you know, if you want to go and have your ten pound an hour dog trainer, that's fine. Not knocking it. You want to go and do that, don't have a problem. But you're going to be running around like headless chicken. Yeah, uh, uh, you, what you said there is very logical, and and I think when people hear about competition or get rattled by competition, is is a few things. They're they're thinking about an emotional mindset, uh, as in not being able to, to compete. Um, not logical, which you said is the supply demand, right? Business is about supply demand. If there's you know, to two, 200 uh, million dogs, 200 million is a large number, but just go with it. 200 million. Billions, there's dogs. billions of dogs. Billions, right? So, but then there's 500 million dog trainers. Well, there's still enough to go around, right? So I think a lot of people do get emotional about it and not thinking logically about it. Number two as well, like this comes down to like saturation. Like people go, oh, that market's saturated. If someone says that to me, it says to me, you you think you're shit. You think you can't compete in that market where I say, actually, there's demand there. You've just got to perform. Yeah, for sure. Which you said, right? You said you've got to be good to show value, which you obviously have. And that's why you're an industry leader as well as the niche. But, you know, being good at what you do is very important. Um, I think competition can be one of the best things that can ever happen to people. I really do. I think it levels you up. It pushes you to do things. It's almost like someone's at the back of your neck trying to like, it's very close to, you know, g- going ahead of you. Um, rather than being a, having a defeatist attitude, like a weak victim defeatist attitude. Like I want you to like go for it. I want you to, you know, I'm going to beat these people. I'm going to perform better. Um, and obviously you've got that attitude and you won award from a, from a dragon Theo Pathetus on the dragon's end, right? Yeah, for sure. So he's from uh, Dragonstone. It's his, yeah, it's his personal, um, it's his gift back to small businesses. Love that. Absolutely um, amazing. But yeah, no, I, I, and, I, and I just think like I had an opportunity to join a load of other dog trainers who were all working together um, for the same breed. Mm-hmm. And I was a bit like, no, I'm not interested in that. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in a, in, in a, a click of, people that are, that don't have don't have business knowledge that haven't that haven't you know they all know each other through the dog training world which is fantastic mm. but there's no business element going off there so everybody's then just created a niche or a pool of people mm. but none of them are actually standing up and taking that space because mm. they're all probably a bit scared to do that yeah absolutely and yeah you everything you're saying i completely agree with um, Katie, what for you has like been the would you say is the ultimate factor that you think for you personally that has enabled you to live a life and build a life from where you was to the police to 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 where you are now um, in a life? What's kind of been the one factor do you think that has uh, has been in order for you to achieve that? Has it been like is it your mindset? Is it your attitude? Is it you know the support you have now? What is it for you? You're liking these tricky, deep, and meaningful today, aren't you? Yeah, sorry, you me, me and Lorna got deep the other day. I'm going to get deep with you, okay? So, so 
Hmm. Okay, so I think that it's an element of all of it. So it's an element of having the right attitude mm -hmm. and being being open, being in a position to change your mindset and wanting to change, but having some kind of goal to get there as well. So there's always going to be a desire to do something and you can either go with it and get yourself to that point mm -hmm. or you can just carry on daydreaming about it. So for me, I would say, and I've said this right from the beginning, whatever it takes, like if you want to do something like, I mean, for example, I'm really shit at football. I can't play football to save my life. I've got two left feet. But for some random reason, I took myself in, it was years ago now, like 10 years ago now, took myself off to a football weekend because I thought it was a good thing to do. Mm. I got substituted for a 50-year-old and I was like 20-something at the time. Mm. Okay. But I thought, well, oh, you know, what have I got to lose? Nothing. Yeah, a bit of pride. But actually, I just still went and did it, even though I knew deep down it was pretty shocking at football um but like I think when you sign up to stuff when you I think it's about making a commitment to yourself that's what I'm going to go with so you make that commitment to yourself consciously but it may have come from your subconscious so you can think about something you can visualize something you can dream about it but it's never going to become a reality until you do it so until you take those steps to get to that thing no different to going to the gym like how easy is it to go oh, I can't be asked to go to the gym mm. but then once you go it's like oh yeah okay yeah quite enjoyed that yeah it's, it's the same it's the same in business like it's really easy to go oh I don't want to do that mm. oh, I can't bother to go and do that I'll go and do something else but the only person that's then losing is you you're not putting that effort in you're not taking that step towards that that dream that goal the desire whatever that thing is for you um yeah so hopefully hopefully that answers that but i think attitude mindset and having a, a desire but actually taking that action and just having that you get one life you know we've all had people that we've lost we've all had people that you know should still be around and actually why aren't they mm. you know they never got that opportunity so i just think just just go for it just take it and everything happens for a reason i love that absolutely amazing very very well said katie it's been an absolute pleasure having catch up on the show uh three years on um i can't wait to see what the next three years have for you going forward i'm sure it's going to be an amazing journey and uh with the new business and obviously the dog's code as well um and guys, this is going to be up on the YouTube channel later in the week. It's also going to be live on the podcast itself. Um, Katie, before we end, what bit of inspiration can you share for our listeners listening to this, thinking that they want a different life, but they're just scared. They're fearful. They haven't got the support. They haven't got the, they feel like they haven't got the resources and they feel stuck. Oh my gosh. Um, how long have we got? No, not really. Um, so I would say, put your big pants on like take a leap of faith there's worse things that could be happening you know you could end up with a could end up out of the job tomorrow because somebody's making that decision for you and you could actually be making your own decisions love it ladies and gentlemen katie say well katie thank you so much for your time really really appreciate it um again just as a reminder this is going to be up on the youtube channel and also on the podcast soon katie thanks once again inspirational thank you for all that you do with shift success as well as a coach and uh hopefully we'll be checking in on the show in another three years to see where you're at as well awesome thank you very much for having me cheers katie take care bye for now